The world's most famous explorers and oceanographers are here in St. Petersburg, and you'll get a chance to meet them next on Science Rocks. in the scientific eyes of the world are here in St. Petersburg to explore the Global Ocean Film Festival and the Conservation Summit. This week's long event celebrates the educational films about oceanography and aquatic conservation, and it's a who's who in the scientific and documentary filmmaking world. Debbie Kinder is the founder and CEO of the Blue Ocean Film Festival. Partly it was because I was a little frustrated. My husband and I were filmmakers and it was frustrating to find the great stories and the science and bring it all together with the arts. And there's amazing people who are out there and just bringing them together to kind of work together in, in synergy. And that was why we, we did this. It's such an opportunity for many of our students to come here. They were here yesterday, they're here today. What are you hoping that students can walk away with this film festival? Some, some nuggets of information. There's such amazing people who are there, and that's one of the things that we still just get so excited about. It's these great, great minds, visionaries, very accomplished people, and we want to leverage that out to the community, and we want students to be able to engage with these people. Many of them will be like once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, but because they, they can show that the way forward, you don't always have to know the answers. It's just continuing to be on the path and and I think that's very helpful for students to understand that and there's such a broad diversity of uh, disciplines here when I was a student I had no idea some of these these different disciplines even existed so we want to help you know the students to understand what opportunities are out there and the event is a treasure of information and inspiration for our next generation the Pace Center is just one of several Pinellas County schools invited to attend the Blue Ocean Film Festival. What opportunity does this mean for your student? This is a wonderful opportunity that most of my students would never ever have um, the privilege of coming to something like this and I really really am very grateful to our partner school Canterbury and uh, Diane O'Grady who out, whose outreach program reached out to us so we could be here. You're a science teacher in Pinellas County and how do you connect what you learned today to your passion as an educator? Um, this makes it very relevant to our students and in real real world th something that's going on right now and I think that's so important to be able to engage children in that way. The students are fascinated to hear the stories of internationally acclaimed explorer Sir Robert Swan who is the first person in the world to walk both the North and South Poles. His 900-mile journey to the South Pole stands as the longest unassisted walk ever made on Earth. But you might be surprised to hear when he got his first inspiration. And I remember it very clearly on Christmas Day, I watched the film about Antarctica. 11 years old and that was it. I had to go to this amazing place, the South Pole, and then for some reason, not too sure why, ended up going to the North Pole too. What advice would you give to future explorers? I think the, the last great exploration left on Earth is to survive on Earth. Um, and we really need to engage with that exploration. And I think that a lot of young people spend quite a lot of time looking down mm -hmm. at their phone, which is a very useful tool, but I also ask them to look up as well. So I think it's really a question of being part of it and not thinking these problems are so big we can't do anything about them. Do one thing, I think. And also, I say to girls, girls, make it cool. Because if you make it cool, hip-hop, happening and sexy to care about the environment, the boys are just immediately going to follow suit and get on with it. After his talk, Sir Robert Swan speaks to many of the students that are inspired by the stories of his adventures in his annual expeditions to Antarctica, part of his Mission 2041 initiative. He says environmental advocacy is key to the future of our planet, especially with the participation of young women. 
Um, you mentioned advocacy for women. We have a focus in Pinellas County with the STEM academies, and then also listening to your presentation today, we had the Pace Center for Girls, for middle and high school girls. What efforts would you like to see continued with women in STEM fields? I think that, um, you know, my mum, who's 100 years old, you know, gave me some pretty good advice uh, when I was about 16, all this talk about going to the polls, and she said, Rob, you know, women have the power. And I think the first thing is that women do have the power. And women are a hell of a lot more sustainable than men on the whole issue of the environment. Men sort of last a few weeks and then they sort of drift off. Women really do stick to ideas, they stick to action, they're out there and they're doing things. So my suggestion really is, is to, to inspire the girls to get behind doing certain things, because girls love to do mm -hmm. and get out and inspire other girls. Uh, and I also think that it's important that maybe one of them, one day, should come with us on our ship to the Antarctic uh, and meet um, you know, other young women just like them from lots and lots of different countries. So you know, the girls are the hope, mm -hmm. so good luck to them. And the role of women in the field of marine science in oceanographic exploration was first pioneered by Dr. Sylvia Earle. She is the woman's Jacques Cousteau, whose accomplishments are legendary, including hundreds of deep water explorations, logging more than 7,000 hours, countless international awards, and honors for her work in this field. She is currently the explorer in residence for the National Geographic and you might be surprised where her amazing journey begins. And I went to Dunedin Junior High School. I went to Clearwater High School when Clearwater had Clearwater. And then I went to St. Pete when it was a junior college, now St. Petersburg College. So I've got roots in Pinellas County. I have a home in Dunedin. So what's one of your earlier memories about oceanography or conservation? Well, I've been around long enough to have witnessed unprecedented change. The Florida that I knew as a kid doesn't exist anymore. I mean, there are many elements that are still wonderful, and we need to build on that, restore what we can, protect those special, magical areas that still remain. And they do remain, even in Tampa Bay, that has been drastically altered since the 1940s when I arrived here. And our population has gone up to 7 billion globally. It's tripled since I was a kid. So there has to be some way for us to understand our, our dependence on the natural world. And Florida is blessed with so many things that are so special. The springs, the wildlife, the ocean, surrounded by water, water that wells up from the ground below. And it's the life, the natural life. And now we know that we are, all of us, dependent on nature. We have a chance not to just continue to consume all of the wild, but to realize it's our life support system. My parents, both of them, respected nature and instilled that in my brothers and me. And Florida was a great place to learn, and it still is. Another legendary name who is represented at the conference is Cousteau. Jacques' grandson Fabian and granddaughter Celine are very involved with producing documentaries dealing with oceanography and conservation. I love supporting people who are doing cause-focused work, who are finding solutions to problems, whether they're ocean-based or other. Um, I work on an Amazon project with indigenous people. I work often in the ocean community and ocean realm. For me, uh, a place like Blue is a place to reconnect with my network because we all need a sense of community and tribe. I think women getting involved can happen at all levels, whether it's in front or behind the camera in terms of filmmaking. But in terms of advocacy, you have amazing scientists who are out there. They happen to be women. From the beginning, I never necessarily saw my role as a woman as being uh, the cornerstone of what I do. But by virtue of the fact that I am a woman and I am doing my work shows that we are all capable of that. I, of course, have a uh, privilege of having a family legacy, and, um, and I think it's important to mention that that has really helped sustain what I do. 
but my studies have been psychology and a master's in intercultural relations, which is really looking at the human side of the environmental story. And of course, a conversation with Cousteau would not be complete without some thoughts of how her grandfather pioneered oceanography for so many generations. My grandfather was a public figure, and I knew him as such, as a secondary part of our relationship. The first part of our relationship was he was my grandfather. I was his granddaughter. And so in that, we were a normal family. Um, but at the same time, when you have somebody who is such a public figure, and you see, at least I saw throughout my lifetime, how, they, how he has inspired generations of people, you realize the power that one person has to influence. Um, and that power is, is in each one of us. It's not just my grandfather's. He existed at a time where what he was doing was something that was pioneering. Um, now there's a lot of explorers, a lot of filmmakers, um, and they're doing phenomenal work. So I think for, for me the message is not just that it's my grandfather, it's that there's a lot of people like him out there who should be revered and who should be um, known and because they're inspiring and they're pioneering and they're doing phenomenal work when it comes to storytelling and environmental protection. This event inspires the next generation of oceanographers and environmental documentary film producers. David Schneider leads the television unit of CATCOM at Lakewood High School. How does what you experience during the Ocean Bloom Film Festival connect to you as a Pinellas County teacher? It's always a great opportunity when we can bring the students out into the field. Here they've been meeting some of the, some of the best documentary filmmakers around, hearing where the industry is today and where it's going in the future in terms of high definition, ultra high definition, and then something way beyond that. This morning they're in a session on, on all of that. So it's really exciting to see them get excited about this industry, the technology, and also the huge element of conservation and uh, global and environmental responsibility that comes into play, even through the technology. And his students leave inspired. Um, this morning you went to some sessions. Can you explain um, the one that's caught your interest the most? Um, the one I believe has caught my interest the most is the 4K one because I am at the Center for Advanced Technologies and with my teacher, Mr. Snyder, we learned about fast forward productions and stuff and in that film industry. And I learned like the different how the film is involving the resolution for cameras and stuff and what's to come for filming and how that applies to like um, capturing moments for like the ocean ocean and stuff and con conservation of our environment. Almost 100 films and documentaries are shown at the new Sundial Movie Complex in downtown St. Petersburg. And one of the locally produced products is a short film produced by Brad Tanner, the senior school program coordinator at Moat Marine Institute in Sarasota. Why is it so important for you to be a representative of Moat at the Blue Ocean Film Festival? I think it's important for myself and Moat to have a presence here to educate the people about what's happening and how much of the oceans are still left to be explored. I do use this film as a precursor for students to introduce them that there is still a lot to be explored in the ocean and how exciting it can be to discover a new species. And I this film also talks about the scientific process and the, what we go through to set things up. You work with a lot of school groups, and in Pinellas County we have our after-school STEM academies. What connection can you make to STEM in the film that you've produced? Okay, STEM and the film here, there's, so there's lots of technology used in ocean exploration as far as the scuba equipment that we use, the oxygen on our back to the regulator to breathe, and then also the equipment that helps us find these different spots for exploration, so the technology used to locate these spots. And then once we're there, the cameras and the equipment used to follow these fish. The Ocean Blue Film Festival will be back in two years, offering Pinellas County another opportunity to see oceanography and conservation. When we come back, I take some of the conservation lessons learned at the Blue Ocean Film Festival to educators throughout Florida during the Alliance for Family Engagement Conference. Science Rocks returns in a moment. <laughs> 